Hey guys, it's Magdona over here and welcome to my YouTube channel. If today is your first time visiting my channel, hit the subscribe button at the bottom of this video and also hit the notification icon so that anytime we have a new video, you get notified so that we all grow together. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you for your loyalty and thank you for returning back to my channel. Today, the task that we'll be looking at is the 0x10c variadic functions. So in a nutshell, the auto QA review is 33, which is mandatory. And also the checker has been released. Now, for you to be able to understand this particular project very well, you are supposed to look at these resources. You read or watch any of these resources for you to get an in-depth understanding of this particular project. The next thing that you are supposed to look at is the general requirements. The allowed editors are the VI, Vim, and Emacs. All your files will be compiled on Ubuntu 20.04 LTS using GCC. And also, make sure all your files will end with a new line. You must make sure you have a readme.md file, the root of the folder of the project, because this is mandatory. And also, you must make sure your code uses the Betty style, because it will be checked using Betty. The prototypes of all your functions and the prototype of the function put char should be included in your header file called variadicfunctions.h. Don't forget to push your header file and all your header files should be included guarded. Now today, we don't have any quiz to do before we start performing or we start coding. So for us to start coding, we have to launch our sandbox. To do that, you click on this get a sandbox, then you now run your sandbox. When you run your sandbox, it will take you to the whole directory. Now, right now when we ls, you can see that we don't have our project here, but rather our project is inside the root folder. So for us to be able to have access to our repositories and be able to perform our tasks, we change directory, which is cd to cd root. Now when we ls over here, you can see that we have our ALS low level programming repository over here. So to, do, to be able to change directory into that particular repository, you do cd, then the name of the repository, then you hit enter. Then right now when we list directory, that's listing all the content in this particular folder, you can see that all the projects that we have done so far, you can see all of them over here. So the next thing that we are supposed to do is to create this, uh, this particular directory. Now to do that, you type mkdir followed by the name that you copied over here, which is this. So you come here, you paste. It's to now change directory into this particular folder. To do that, you type cd 0x10. That's the name of the directory. Then you hit enter. Then we can now create our readme because we've been told that anytime you create a directory, make sure you have a readme file at the root because it is mandatory. So to create our readme file, let's type vi, then readme, readme.md, then you hit enter. Then you can now type your heading. So you come here and copy the heading over here and you paste. When you are done, you click escape on your keyboard, then you type colon wq to go back to the previous page. Now the W is for saving and the Q is for quitting and going back to the previous page. The next thing that we are supposed to do is to create our function header, which is variadic functions.h. To do that, we come here, copy the file, the file name, Come to our terminal and type vi space and paste the file name that we call. Now your file will open in the command mode. So the next thing that we are supposed to do is to hit I on your keyboard to enter the insertion mode. 
every code that we'll be typing today i'll provide a link in the description below to it so that when you click on it it will take you to google docs containing all the codes that we'll be using in this particular project and i'll also take my time to explain every code to you for you to be able to understand everything that we are doing over here but please for you to get maximum or 100 percent understanding follow me step by step as i also explain the code to you step by step now if you need access to the code it's inside the description below just click on the link and it will take you to where we have all the codes that we have used in this particular project now after clicking i on your keyboard and enter the insertion mode we can now type our code now first of all we will define this so we have defined our function header so if and def variadic functions then we define variadic function so we are including the standard input and output header so we are including this particular file and also the standard argument also we are including it over here now somebody will ask where did i get all of these function prototypes over here these are the functions that we'll be writing in our task so when you come over here from the beginning we are being asked that the prototype of all your functions and the prototype of the function put char should be included so the first prototype that we are supposed to include in our header file is the function put char that is why we have it over here now when you come to task zero you can see that the function that we'll be writing is over here therefore we have to put this particular prototype into our header file that is why we have it over here when you come to task one okay we'll be giving a function prototype in which we'll be writing each function so this is the prototype so you just copy this come here and paste it over here then when we come to task two you can see that this is the function that we'll be writing so you only need to copy the prototype over here come to the header file and paste it over here and also when you come to the last tax which is tax 3 we have the function that will be writing over here this is the prototype of the function that will be writing so you only need to copy it from here come here paste it and end your end if when you are done typing you hit escape on your keyboard and type colon write which is save and also quit and you hit enter so right now you see that when we ls we have our two files readme and our variadic function.h now we can now use betty to check our file to be sure there are no errors after a successful pass by betty we can now do git add git commit dash n then the message created header File. and you do git push to push to github after a successful push we can now start with our first task which is beauty is variable ugliness is constant so to write this so we are being asked to write a function that returns the sum of all its parameters so this is the prototype that we'll be using so this is the function that we'll be writing okay we already placed this particular prototype inside the header file that we have created and also one other condition is if n is equal or equal to zero then return zero so to do that we come here and copy the name of the file that we are supposed to create come back to your terminal and type vi and paste the name of the file in the command mode hit i on your keyboard to enter the insertion mode then we type our code now when you look at the code that we have written okay over here we are including the header file that we have created remember we created variadic functions.h okay then this is the function that will be what we have written over here already the function prototype is inside our variadic functions.h header now we are being asked to write a function that returns the sum of eight the sum of all eight parameters 
so all of these parameters that we have over here okay we are retaining the sum and also we are saying that if n is equal to zero then it should return zero that is why we have our if statement over here based on this particular statement so this statement over here this is the code for it now all of these are variables that we have declared so if you are declaring a variable is the variable type followed by the name so you can see that we have int sum so the data type of this particular sum variable is int this one to the same unsigned int so the i the variable i the data type is unsigned int then the variable ap the data type is va list so we are saying that we should uh, the function should return the sum of all of its parameters so you can see over here for i equal to zero i is less than n and i plus plus so this is a for loop that we have over here so we are saying that until this code will stop executing when this particular condition which is i is less than n has been validated violated so until i is now bigger or equal to n then this code will stop executing then it will return the sum of all its parameters over here so that is what this particular code is doing when you are done typing hit escape on your keyboard and you type colon wq which is save and quit and hit enter then we can now use betty to check our code after a successful check you can now do git add git commit dash n and you type created zero sum then or then you do git push now after pushing the checker has been released so the next thing to do is to click on check your code then you click on start see that our code has been executed successfully so the done over here has been checked and has changed to green so that means we can move on to the next task the next task is to be is to be the value of a variable we are now being asked to write a function that prints numbers followed by a new line so this is the function that we'll be writing we have already placed this prototype inside the header file now where separator is a string to be printed between numbers and n is the number of integers passed to the function we are allowed to use the function printf and also if separator is now we shouldn't print it we are supposed to print a new line at the end of our function so to to write this particular function which must satisfy all of these conditions let's come here and copy the name of the file that will be writing it inside come to your terminal and type vi followed by the name of the file then you hit enter then over here hit i on your keyboard to enter the insertion mode and write your code okay so because we are writing this function we must first of all tell the compiler that we have this function that is why we included it we have we will be writing this function that is why we included it inside the function header over here now over here these are just variable declarations now when you come to the statement over here we are being asked that if the separator is now then we shouldn't print it so you can see that over here if separator is equal to now then separator is equal to this so we are not printing it if the separator is now now the condition over here is if i is less than n then this particular code should keep on executing until this condition is violated so this is what we call a for loop and also this particular code is printing and is printing a new line at the end of our function okay so in a for loop we have the index or initialization the condition and the update 
So the I plus plus over here is the update. And this is the function body. So after you are done typing this particular function, hit escape on your keyboard and type colon WQ and hit enter. Then when you come to your back to your terminal, you type Betty followed by the name of the file to check. After a successful check, we can now do git add, then git commit dash n created print numbers function then git push after pushing to github we can now check our code after successful execution our done will now be checked then it will become green that means we can move on to the next task now the next task is task 2 one woman's constant is another woman's variable write a function that prints strings followed by a new line so this is the function that we are writing we've already placed this particular prototype inside our header file now where the separator is the string to be printed between the strings if n is the number of strings passed to the function so we are allowed to use printf now if separator is now don't print it if one of the string is now print nil instead print a new line at the end of your function so the function that we are going to write must satisfy all of these statements so to do that we come down here copy the name of the file which is two print strings come to our terminal and type vi followed by the name of the file and hit enter in the command mode hit i on your keyboard to enter the insertion mode then we can type our so after typing your code okay so this is the function that we have created from here to here and the whole of this function is satisfying this particular statement now when you look at the first part okay these are the function parameters this is the function name and this is the return type of the function which is void now these are just variables that we have declared now over here we are saying that if separator is now then we shouldn't print it so this particular if statement is satisfying this particular statement now for i equal to zero so the initialization we have initialized i to be zero then the condition is i is less than n then we have i plus plus so the n is the number of strings that we pass to the function then str is equal to va at ap car pointer now if str is equal to now, then we are printing nil. That is why we are saying if one of the string is now, then print nil instead. So this particular code is what we have over here. It's what we have over here. Then print a new line at the end of your function, which is this particular statement. So the whole of this code is satisfying everything that we have over here the whole of this so when you are done typing your code hit escape on your keyboard to enter the command mode then you type colon w q and hit enter after that we can now use betty to check our code after a successful check by betty you now type gate add gate commit dash n then you type created print strings function then from here we can now do git push pushing to github the next thing is for us to check our code so after a successful check we can now see that our done is now green and has been ticked so the next and the final task in this particular project 
is tax 3. To be is to be the value of a variable. So we are supposed to write a function that prints anything. So the prototype that will be, the function that will be writing, this is its prototype. And we have already placed this prototype inside the header file of our, our project. So the format is a list of types of arguments passed to the function. So C is for car, I is integer, F is float, and S is car pointer. Now if the string is null, then print nil instead. Any other character should be ignored. So we are not allowed to use for, go to, ternary operator, else, do while. But we can use a maximum of two while loops and two if. We are also supposed to declare a maximum of nine variables and we are allowed to use printf. Now make sure that you print a new line at the end of your function. So the whole of this statement, we must write a function that will satisfy this particular statement. So to do that, you scroll to the bottom here, copy the name of the file, come into your terminal and type vi, then you paste the name of the file and hit enter. In the command mode of your VI, hit I to enter the insertion mode. Then we can now type our code. I will provide a link in the description to all the codes that we've used in this project. And please, if along the way you are having a blocker, just pause the video, go back and start from the beginning and follow me step by step so that we move along. After typing your code, first of all, let's include our header file. That is what you see over here. Then this is the function that we are supposed to write. Now this is our while loop. When you look at, when you look at the condition that we've been given, we say, they said we can only use a maximum of two while loops. So you can see that we are only using one while loop. Then, over here, they said we can only use a maximum of two ifs. So over here, we are using what we call a single if statement. Now, somebody should ask us, so what is this thing doing over here? We call it a switch statement. Okay? So this is saying that if the case is C, and we know that C is character, then this particular statement should execute. Then, if the case is I, which is integer. So if the person, the variable pass, okay, the argument pass is a character, then case C will execute. Now, if the argument pass is I, which is integer, then this particular case should execute. If the argument pass is a float, then this particular statement should execute. And also, if the argument pass is a car pointer, then this but that's a now then this particular statement should execute and also this is what we call the default statement if none of these things have been passed then it will execute the last statement now somebody will ask why do we have break in between every case statement the break over here prevents the next code or the next statement from what executing so if it is case c that is executing assuming we don't have our break statement over here that means the whole of this code will execute but we only want only this particular code to execute if this condition is correct we only want this particular code to execute so that is why we need the break statement so this statement break the code at this place and prevent it from what? The rest from executing. So you can see that the whole of this code is now satisfying the statement over here. So when you are done, click escape on your keyboard, then you click colon WQ to go back to the, to save and go back to the previous page, which is your terminal. And over here, we can now use Betty to check our code. After a successful check by Betty, we can now do git add 
get commit dash n then my message is going to be created print or function then i can now push to github after a successful push come here and click on check your code so after a successful check you see that the done will now change to green and it will be ticked then we are done with our project so please if you are a returning subscriber thank you for returning and also if today is your first time visiting my channel please hit the subscribe button and also click the notification icon so that anytime we have a new video you'll be the first to be notified we can go together please share the video like and also encourage others to subscribe especially those that want to go into software engineering because there are a lot of software engineering videos in store and to be coming soon thank you